the enforceability of decree. How you get it? So you have a criminal act. In criminal act, enforceability is a you get the punishment, imprisonment, which extends up to two years. You can give fine, which is twice the amount of it, and this fine can be recovered, or otherwise there's a default in prison. So there were criminal enforceability of the fine given. So it this act came with a very noble thought. That it will reboost the confidence of the businessmen in the money market or the payment structure of the country. Initially, it came from Section 138 to 142. Then, definitely, amendments kept on coming on the various things, and we'll see how these amendments are there and how they are relevant or useful for us. Now, the first thing first is what we'll see is. Section 138 of the NIA. Now, just let me read that topic of it. Dishonor of check for insufficiency, etc., of funds in the account. Now, the title itself gives you a very clear picture. Dishonor of check for insufficiency of fund, etc. Now, mark the word. There can be deliberate reasons for getting the check return. But those deliberate returns, the reasons for non-payment would get covered under etc. So etc. would have a usedom generous. Usedom generous is a terminology which says that it draws, etc. means doesn't mean anything and everything under the sun. It, it has to have the meaning in relation to the word before it. That is use them generous. So what is the word before it? Insufficiency of fund. So 138 postulates. Now what is the requirement of 138? How can you say that an offense has been committed by a person who has issued a check in favor of A for the work performed by A for B. So first thing first is a check to be issued by Mr. A. A valid check. A check which can be tendered in banking system. Two, it should be for a commercial transaction. C, it has to be for the payment of that liability or debt in part or full. Four, this check, the drawing presents in it. No, the drawer has to issue this check from his own bank account. So he has to be a holder of that bank account. Now the drawee presents this check in his own bank account. This check on presentation is returned by the banker, say insufficiency of fund. Now, remember, this is the beginning of the not even offense, but the beginning of the procedure which would lead to committing of an offense. So remember what are the criteria? A, the drawer has to issue a check from his own bank account in lieu of commercial transaction, which is what he pays is part or full of his debt or liability. The drawee presents the check in his own bank account. And the banker returns the check, say insufficiency of one. So once you have qualified the six criteria, then we come to the second stage of it. So as uh, like Amit, I was talking to him. 
whenever you file a proceeding under uh, 138, a complaint, remember this six criteria has to be fulfilled. First, then comes the second part, which we say provisional part. One, what is the provisional part? A. The check has to be tendered within six months of its execution. So, if a check bears a date, say of today is what? Today is sixteenth of April, twenty twenty-two. Then it has to be presented before six months. Before six months, that is sixth of October, twenty twenty-two. Now understand one thing, and now the RBI has said that six months would become three months. So the check has to be presented within three months. The act has not yet been amended, but the requirement of RBI is three months. So add three months from today, May, June, July. That is. 15th of July 2022. If you present this check before that, it's a valid legal check. That is one. Two. The holder in due course, the holder of the check or holder in due course. This you will understand when you read section six and eight of the NI Act. Holder of the check or holder in due course. That is the drawee of the check. He issues a legal notice to the drawer that your check has been returned due to insufficiency of fund by your bank. That is second point. Third, the drawer, even he receives the legal notice, does not make payment of the. Check amount. If he does not make the payment of the check amount, then the offence is made up. If the drawer, after receipt of the check of the legal notice, makes the payment. Of the check amount, then no offence is made up. Now let me repeat. As I said, that for filing of the under section one thirty eight, there are six ingredients before your procedure starts. Here also there will be six procedures. A, check to be presented within three months. B, check returned by the bank. Saying insufficiency of fund. Three, the drawer of the check issues a notice or a legal notice to the drawer or the person who has signed the check. Fourth, the person. Even after receipt of the notice or a legal notice, does not make payment of the check amount. Then the offence is made out. Now this five stage is qualified by timeline. What is the timeline? In a very simple word, thirteen days, fifteen days, thirty days. If you remember this, seventy-five days. You have it clear. Means from the day your banker informs you that the check has been has returned due to insufficiency of fund. Say the banker informs me today on sixteenth of April that the check has been returned due to insufficiency of fund. Then I get thirty days. Excluding today to give notice, the person who has issued the check 
he gets 15 days to someone is writing i don't know who is writing so so the person who has executed the check he gets 15 days to make the payment if he does not make the payment within 15 days, then 30 days for their fraud, you can go to the court and file the case. Important is the offense is made out only when the drawer of the check does not make the payment within 15 days of re receiving the notice. Now here also, remember one thing, in notice also, you will cover everything, but there's always a tendency to ask extra money, like in form of interest and all. The moment you do that, this notice becomes different. What you have to ask is only the check amount, and not more than that. So, once the offense is made out, then you file a case under Section 200 of CRPC before the court. So, 6 plus 5 plus 3. 6 is the requirement, 6 ingredients required to the file, uh, bouncing of the check. Five ingredient, five steps after of bouncing of the check, and three steps is the timeline. If you make this in your pleading, your complaint is perfect. There's no difficulty. And your case is made up. Okay. So regarding this 15 days. Uh, is it like uh, uh, the how will we count the 15 days? 15 days is from the day the legal notice has been served upon the draw. And in case of the uh, like, in, if if the proper uh, service of the notice has not been done, what in uh, what we will do is that. You put all your questions together and then we'll yes, email me. Because this all, all right. will come into it. All right. So if it's a defective service, because you have asked, I'm answering it here only, but otherwise keep it for the end. If it is a defective service, then the no offense is made up. Though okay. now the law also says that treat this criminal complaint as a notice what you have filed and give him 15 days and he will make the payment and so on and so forth. But effectively, if you see the act, where act as it is section 138, it says very clearly that if legal notice is not served, no offense is made. Sure. So you have to prove the delivery. Delivery can be also that if the person is avoiding a service, that is also a presumed delivery. If I, if, if A is communicating with B on emails, and that's the regular email in operation, the notice is served to email, that's a service. Yes, sir. You send it to a speed post, get the tracking record, it's a service. You send it through a private courier. The private courier gives you a receipt that Mr. X has signed the, has received the letter. It's a service. So service is something which can today be proved. It is not old time. That it was very difficult. You see, you would send an acknowledgement. The other side would not sign an acknowledgement. Then it was a difficulty to prove service. In that situation, we used to summon the post office person from post office with the entire record and that became a huge long process in itself. So to cut short all this, it is now very clear you bring that delivery uh, report, the receipt which is available on the website of the postal department, show it to the court and good enough they accept it. 
at best you can do is because it's a delivery which you have taken out a print out from the website you file an affidavit under section 65b of the evidence act because it's an electronic evidence just to say that yes this is a valid legal document and you have not tampered with it so that is service now once the service is done and 15 days has passed you get precisely 30 days to file a complaint a complaint is filed under section 200 of the statutes okay so sir uh, this is vikas jaiswal uh, i am the student of first year llb i have few questions so should i ask or should i wait no, till the end? the end just keep it for the end Otherwise, you know, if you start doing the question in the initial stage, then it will disrupt the entire process for everyone. Okay. All so right, sir. Write down. Oh, I have questions uh, regarding all these requirements and the integration yes, you yes, just yes, talked about. Yes, sir. All right, sir. So now, what happens is, that once you file a complaint, and then once you file a complaint. Under two hundred of CRTC, it goes before the first class magistrate. Like in Jharkhand, it is judicial magistrate. In Delhi, it can be metropolitan magistrate. So it's the magistrate, MM, trial what we say. Here, the maximum punishment is two years, and the fine is twice that. Once you file the complaint. The court has to lead a pre-summoning evidence. That is, you will have to lead an evidence to prima facie say that whatever you have stated is the truth. And on that pre-summoning evidence, now report is the requirement of pre-summoning evidence. Earlier, it would have been a very long, drawn process where you would go to court and orally speak everything. And the court would examine and report. But fortunately, now amendment has come in the Negotiable Instrument Act. As we go down, you will see that it says that you can find an your evidence by way of an affidavit. So what I told you, six ingredient, five ingredient, and three ingredient. If you put that in the affidavit, exhibit all the documents. Like if you have a commercial transaction. Exhibit the proof of that transaction. Is they say there is an agreement or an invoice raised or a ledger account or a letter correspondence, anything, document to substantiate it's a commercial transaction. B, the check in its original form as has been returned by the bank. C, the return memo of the bank which says that. It has been re returned due to insufficiency of fund. Then you will exhibit the legal notice which you have sent, along with postal receipt. Along with the legal notice, you will also bring on record the proof of service, which is I said, tracking report or delivery. So now you write everything in an affidavit format. And to save time, you file it along with the complaint itself. So earlier a plea summoning which would take six months now effectively takes two days. I file the case along with the complaint, with all the documents, and the plea summoning evidence by way of an affidavit. It comes before the judge. Judge reads it all. I appear as a witness, and I say yes. This affidavit has been signed by me, affirmed by me, and I validate the contents of this affidavit. Judge is satisfied, and he takes cognizance of the offence and issues notice, or rather, summons to the accused. So this is the primary procedure. Now what happens is very important difference from a criminal law and a civil law. Normal criminal law will say mens rea, guilty mind. You have to prove 
that the person is of guilty mind. As we say in criminal murder cases, actus reus, mens rea, an act has to be done and guilty mind has to be there. In 138, you don't have to prove guilty mind. The moment a check is presented, it's bounced, period. I don't have to explain that Mr. A had an intent to deceive me or Mr. A had an intent to commit this crime. I don't have to prove anything. For me, an offense is completed once he does not make the payment within 15 days of receipt of the legal notice or a notice written by the drawing to the drawer. So first big difference was this, that mens rea is not the second important factor was section 139. Now, what it said was presumption. The moment other side, the accused, admits the check, signature on the check, there's a presumption drawn in favor of the drawee, that is in favor of the complainant and against the accused. Now, for me, I have proven my case. Now, he has to rebut. So, the presumption is drawn under section 139, but it's a rebuttable presumption. What do you mean by rebuttable presumption? Like, the accused says that I paid in cash, and this is the receipt rebuttable presumption. Or the accused says, though I issued this check, but there was a deficiency of service. The work was not performed. It could be complete satisfaction. Again, a presumption rebuttable. A defense for the accused. Or the accused says that work was performed, but I also had to receive money from him. And this is the settlement which we had. But despite that, he presented the check for in cash. Or one of the most debatable issue is the security check, that he has given a security check. Though the law has also explained what is security check and how a security check can become an enforceable check, but these are rebuttable defense. Okay. So the important part is that section 139 provides that even the moment the accused admits the signature on the check, the presumption is drawn in favor of the complainant and against the accused, a presumption though rebuttable by the accused. So you can see now that the way this act has been drafted, it is drawn in favor of the person who is the holder of the check. Say Mr. A is the holder of the check and Mr. B is the person who has executed the check. The entire act is in favor of A. Lot of onus has been caused, casted upon B, which is very unlike criminal case. Whenever we get an opportunity or you get an opportunity, read section 101 to 106 of the Evidence Act. You will realize what is onus to prove. In criminal case, the onus to prove is always on the prosecution. That is the police. That is the state. First, the police proves the case. Then only the accused has to discharge his liability by saying whatever the police has proved is incorrect. In 138 case, it is contrary, it is opposite. The moment check is admitted, check and signature is admitted, the onus is on the accused to prove his innocence, not on the prosecution or the complainant to prove that yes, the transaction took place. So, this is a very, very significant shift in legal requirement with regard to section 138 of the Evidence Act. There will be another gray area and a lot of debates happens 
without a guarantor. A person who is guaranteed to be act, can he be made a accused under 130? There are many judgments which has come recently, but primarily it says that if the guarantor has signed the check, then yes, he becomes liable. Otherwise, normally not. There was another issue which had come recently was. Then what happens if someone has issued multiple checks? Like I have issued a check. Uh, sorry, I have issued a legal notice via email, and I have also issued a legal notice through speed post. Which one will come? The answer is first legal notice will come. and issue of a legal notice by way of email will be considered as a delivery on the same day unless until that email has bounced back or the other side says that the account was dead and dormant and never used for communication but these are those are only difference and if if it sent by whatsapp sir WhatsApp is not a valid mode of service by any stretch. So during COVID time, the court was affecting service through WhatsApp in some of the urgent cases because normal mechanism was not working. But for purposes of evidence and legal notices, WhatsApp has never a means of communication ever. it has to be even from electronic mode it has to be a legally acceptable electronic mode which can be proved whatsapp cannot be proved so there were certain debates but very clearly whatsapp they say is not acceptable so once under section 139 a presumption is drawn then the owner shifts on the accused to prove his innocence and he cannot just say that look i have not done it and that's good enough their denial is not sufficient he has to bring substantial evidence to prove his case or prove his innocence unlike in criminal case if the prosecution has not discharged its onus and has not proved the offense then the accused can be acquitted by his mayor saying that i have not done the offense or i have not committed the offense so understand the difference here the accused has to prove i am innocent in a normal criminal case the accused does not has to prove that i am innocent the police has to say accused is guilty of committing a crime okay so once a presumption is drawn under 139 then primarily will come to section 141 because section 140 says that defense which may not be allowed by a prosecution under section 138 so it says that drawer had no reason to believe and this is important so one of the defense which the drawer can say that i had no knowledge that this check was presented for execution for in cash money or this check was issued by me so this kind of defense will not work in court they have to bring a strong defense as i was giving you some example mitigating costs i also have to recover money he had to pay me more we had settled in settlement i had already paid the money these are the strong defenses so now we have understood from section 138 and 139 how an offense under section 138 is made out how a criminal complaint can be filed what is the procedure a court has to adopt but 
this is between individuals. Mr. A against Mr. B, or Miss A against Miss B, and whatever. Now understand, it's a company. Then what happens? So you have Section One Forty One of the Negotiable Instrument Act. As One Forty One of the Negotiable Instrument Act says that offence committed by a company, every person at the time the offence was committed. Was in charge with the day-to-day -day affairs of the company, or responsible for the day-to-day -day affairs of the company, or the conduct of the business, shall be guilty of committing an offence. Now it says it's a very, very, very wide word. It says a company is itself guilty of offence, but company you cannot punish because it's a non-juristic person. It is artificial citizen. So every person or officer of the company who is responsible for the conduct of the business of the company shall be can be made an accused in a case under Section One Thirty. Now, assume a company like uh, Reliance. They will have some thousands of employees. Will you make everyone an accused? You can't. So the judgments came. Many judgments came. S N S Pharmaceuticals, Alita Hada, and so on and so forth. Finally, the law crystallizes on three lines. A. Company is made to be made an accused. Very important. Two. Signatory on the check has to be made a party. Three managing director has to be made a party. Four directors who are responsible for the affairs of that business transaction has to be made a party. Now what they did instead of every person responsible for the conduct of the business has been reduced to everyone responsible for the conduct of that particular business with that person. Am I clear here? From everyone, now it has become only those who are responsible for that act. And who are they? The company, managing director, because managing it is believed and presumed that every damn thing is done by the managing director in a company. He is the officer of the company. So, company, managing director, director who are responsible for the actual business transaction, and the signatory of the check. So this is how you can make a company a part. And company means partnership firm equally, a registered partnership. If it's unregistered partnership firm, then every partner becomes liable. Okay. Once you have seen that the, you can make a case against the company also, then the next aspect which comes in is section 142, cognizance of an offense. Now section 142, cognizance of an offense, when I was telling you section 138, I already told you that A, The person, the accused, does not make payment within 15 days of receiving the notice for payment. Within 30 days from after the expiry of 15 days, the complainant can file a complaint before the court. The court takes the pre-summing evidence on record and on being satisfied, it takes cognizance of an offense. What is cognizance? Actually, section 190 of the CRPC defines cognizance. Cognizance is a state of mind. Remember, cognizance has not been defined in the CRPC. The various judicial interpretations is, finally they said, cognizance is a state of mind of the judge 
when he decides to proceed with the criminal case. Means the judge, after reading everything, realizes yes, case is made up. Now I'll proceed. So he has taken cognizance of it. It's a state of mind of the judge. So once the magistrate takes cognizance of the matter, and very important thing comes in the picture, where this kind of complaint can be filed. There were a lot of controversies. In this. Initially, it could have been anywhere and everywhere like this. So the whole theory was where the check has been presented. Now this became a source of mischief. It's like this. I enter a transaction between Delhi. You give me a check in Delhi. The business is done in Delhi. But now I travel to say Nagaland or Arunachal Pradesh or maybe Kerala. And I present the check in a bank account there. And that check bounces. Now I file a case in Nagaland. Just imagine how difficult it would be for a person to go from here to Nagaland or Arunachal Pradesh or Kerala to fight a case. So this became a very big nuisance problem. At that time, you used to say there are five criteria to file a criminal case. Where the business transaction took place, where the complainant is deciding, where the accused is deciding, where the check was presented, where the check bounced, and where the legal office was sent. So there were a huge number of criteria. Finally, Supreme Court brought in an amendment in section 142 and said, no, it can't be anywhere and everywhere. It has to be only two places, either of the two, where the principal branch account is of the complainant or principal branch account of the accused. Means say, I have a bank account in State Bank of India in Delhi I present this check, say in Jharkhand, State Bank of India. That's it. The drawers, drawers bank will remain only Delhi, not Rancho. Similarly, if you issued a check from say State Bank of India, Rancho, then wherever you have operating your bank account from, because now you can operate your bank account anywhere. So wherever you are operating your bank account, but the jurisdiction will be only one place, that is Rachi Jhan. So important now is of the jurisdiction part, which has been very clear, clearly laid down or crystallized, and where it will be. Now, when this amendment came in, so now this provision is not relevant, which is, I see something. Yes. Sorry. So, because of this, all the cases which were pending, now this, this amendment to the Act had a retrospective effect. Means that all the cases which were pending were also transferred on the basis of this. Where is the original bank account? But now that the area is settled, this is a 2015 amendment. Now that the issue is over. Then comes section 143 of the negotiable instrument, which says. The court has a power to try the cases summarily. Now, summarily means that I will the court will record the gist of allegation. You will record the evidence, but only the relevant part of the evidence, not a very elaborate and a fanciful trial, like we can do in a novel criminal case. So, section one forty three. 
primarily is in two parts. One part says, if the judge feels that the punishment given will be less than a year, then he will do a summary trial. But if he realizes that the punishment to be given is more than one year, and the fine is also twice the amount, in that case, it will be a full-fledged trial, but it will be a day-to-day -day trial. So important now, they wanted to bring in efficacy. And this is also very important. Because 138 came with a very noble thought. That you will go to court in six months, conviction will happen and you will get your money back. And the person who has committed a crime, he goes to jail. But it's not happening actually. 138 cases are languishing for 10 years. Initially, because of cumbersome pre-summing evidence, it was languishing. The judiciary amended it, but still it was languishing because I've seen ICIC event. They file lakhs of cases. So they jam the entire judicial mechanism. An individual person like me will fail to compete with them. If you ever see the cause list of the court of a judicial magistrate, you will see that from top 50 cases, say of today is ICICI ban. Tomorrow is IDBI ban. So the day after is SBI ban. So they consume whole time. For an individual person like us, by the time the court reaches that, it is already lunchtime. So various mechanisms came. A, that this day to day, like in Delhi, they are doing is digital court, virtual court. So till the framing of charge, which is notice of inquiry, they'll do everything virtually, like we are doing virtually. In pandemic, we know the, how the courts were working virtually. So now there's no difficulty. You file the case virtually, you appear before the case virtually, court virtually, you argue your matter virtually, the court will issue warrant or summons depending on. And then notice of inquiry is framed. Thereafter, it, once a trial begins, you come to court. So this will save a lot of time. I don't know whether it's happened they are doing it, but they should try. VC is the solution to the future. According to lawyers will benefit, but the environment will benefit more. A normal day in, in the high court, at least I can say not less than 20,000 or 30,000 people comes. And if you do VC, only 30, 40 or maximum 50 staff comes. That is the massive difference. So, they said day-to-day -day trial. Like I said, in Delhi, they are doing digital courts. I'm sure they will be doing many places. But then said court realized that this is also not leading to a solution. The whole purpose of speedy trial is getting defeated. Then what they did was they brought in section 143A of the Negotiable Instrument Act. Now, this section primarily says power to direct interim compensation. Now, the court has a power to grant interim compensation up to 20% of the principal value. Though I can say that the judiciary has not adopted this provision very strongly and not giving compensation in most of the cases. Though I think in genuine cases, the court should grant 30%. That will become a huge deterrent. But here, one thing is very important. That the court also said that once you the issue the notice, there will be three things which will be done. A, 
after receipt of notice the accused again has the option of making the payment within first two hearings of appearing if he makes that payment then the case will be compounded and it will be similarly if you see the provision it says that if you settle say not in the what do you call the mm court or the first two hearing but you go to sessions or the high court then you would pay 15% of the principal if you go to supreme court and settle there then you pay 20% of the amount so these all are mechanism which has been brought in to encourage a person to make the payment let us assume the case has been filed though the criminal offense has been made out but still you can make the payment and if you make the payment the case will be closed because it's a compoundable offense so because it's a compoundable offense then the court has the power to close the complaint once the payment has been made and here there is a very important thing even if assume the complainant does not want to close the case still the court can close that complaint as per judicial order so this is important part of it that the court still gives you after committing the offense after coming to the court still the court gives you an option to close the case now important thing as i already told you section 145 evidence by way of affidavit which is now i have told you. section 1346 is important that's it the check has bounced would you call the banker to prove that check has bounced earlier we used to. now we have section 146 the moment you present the original it would be deemed it will be deemed to be proven that the check has returned due to insufficiency Are you getting it? So, if we have seen from section one thirty eight to one forty seven and one forty eight is the appellate authority, we are very clear that at the court, not the legislature and court, has not only made every effort to make the proceeding. very efficient and to make the proceeding available for any litigant who has been in commercial transaction and who has been not paid or cheated or whatever okay so what i do is someone had questions rajesh can we leave the field now so the basic things i have told them yes yes Yes, yes. So whoever may have any question, uh, may may just put that those questions now. Any question, any question, you want to ask, that you can ask. You can ask in Hindi. Ah, in Hindi, you can ask. I have no problem. In Hindi, I can ask. Hello, sir. Okay. 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 से लोन लिया है एक छोटे अमाउंट का दो चार लाख रुपए का तो उसको भी प्रूफ करना होगा इन कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ ठीक है अमाउंट छोटा हो या बड़ा हो उससे मतलब नहीं है जी सर अमाउंट कुछ भी हो 
बट वो कॉमर्शियल ट्रांजेक्शन है अब आपने संजीव सहाय को फ्रेंडली लोन ले दिया राइट कोई बिजनेस ट्रांजेक्शन मेरे साथ ही नहीं बट संजीव साहब के पास आया और बोला मिस्टर प्रताप मुझे पैसे दे दो दो लाख आदि दे दिया ये कॉमर्शियल ट्रांजेक्शन नहीं अब आपका वन थर्टी एट विल नॉट मैच और राइट सर and uh, if 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 it includes the interest yani yani agar friendly loan agar as an interest mein diya hai to interestment is totally different up you file a case under 406 of the ipc that's different interestment okay. is totally different interestment same negotiable instrument hai ka koi matlab nahi okay sir अच्छा सर सेकंड क्वेश्चन था सर जो नोटिस का रिक्वायरमेंट है 15 डेज का इफ द अदर पार्टी द एक्यूज्ड इज एक्सकॉन्डिंग फ्रॉम हिज ओन होम तो सर उसका क्या होगा सर सॉल्यूशन सर प्रेजम्पशन है देखो जनरल क्लॉजेस एक्ट में भी प्रेजम्पशन होंगे और यहां पर उस प्रेजम्पशन को लाया गया है कि अगर आप लास्ट नोन एड्रेस को भेज दिए हैं और उनका और कोई एड्रेस हमारे पास नहीं है और तो प्रिज्यूम करेंगे तो प्रिज्यूम करेंगे कि सर्विस हो गई ओके नहीं तो कोई भी ऐसे कर सकता है कि रूम बंद कर दो रखा जाए ओके ठीक है सर और जो थर्ड क्वेश्चन था सर जो टाइमलाइन के ऊपर जैसे अगर कोई चेक है जो पोस्ट डेटेड है जैसे अगर यानी दो महीने बाद का चेक का डेट डाला हुआ है तो उसका टाइम कब से रन करना चालू टाइमलाइन कब से रनिंग चालू होगा दो महीने के बाद से पोस्ट डेटेड चेक का इंपॉर्टेंट ये है कि पोस्ट डेटेड चेक आल्सो बिकम्स अ करंट चेक फ्रॉम द डेट द लोन बिकम्स पेएबल एंड ड्यू मतलब ये देखो आज आपने मुझसे मैंने एक बिजनेस ट्रांजैक्शन आपने मेरे साथ किया अब मुझे मुझे वो पेमेंट है तो 60 दिन में आपको करना था मैंने आपको बोला कि मैं सिक्योरिटी के लिए आपको ये चेक दे दे रहा हूं सिक्सटी फिफ्थ डे का क्योंकि साठ दिन में तो आपको पे कर दूंगा आप मुझे चेक वापस कर दे मैंने आपको साठ दिन में नहीं पे किया तो वो चेक जो पोस्ट डेट है था सिक्सटी फिफ्थ डे बिकम्स अ वैलिड लीगल चेक विच कैन बी प्रेजेंटेड फॉर इन कैश ठीक है ठीक है सर so if you could little bit uh, elaborate about the jurisdiction part sir ab jurisdiction mein koi confusion nahi hai jurisdiction do hi jagah hai main aur aap theek hai aap maine aapko check diya se mera check icici bank jo mera principal branch hai jahan par mera account khula tha where i open my account if say i have opened my account से इन आईसीआईसीआई बैंक दरी है ओके यस नो आई कैन इशू अ चेक फ्रॉम दैट बैंक बिकॉज़ दैट्स माय प्रिंसिपल अकाउंट एंड से यू हैव अ बैंक अकाउंट इन रांची व्हिच इज एसबीआई रांची व्हेन यू हैड ओपन्ड योर बैंक सो ओनली दीस टू बैंक लोकल बैंक विल हैव कोर्ट विल हैव दिस एंड नो अदर अच्छा सर एक यानी क्वेश्चन था और कि अगर द क्लाइंट वांट्स टू यानी इंक्लूड 406 एंड 420 आल्सो यानी अगर वो चाहता है कि वो कंप्लेनेंट के ऊपर जो कंप्लेनेंट है वो अक्यूज्ड के ऊपर ये सब धाराएं भी लगाए तो हम लोगों को कैसे उसमें आगे बढ़ना चाहिए आप दोस्तों का कंप्लेंट आ गया उसे 138 के साथ आप 420 लगा दें तो सारे सेक्शन एक साथ को करंटली रन करेंगे और Uh, hello, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. So, what, what do we mean by commercial transaction? As to what we included in commercial transaction? No, your voice has broken in between. What do you mean? Are you saying what do you mean by commercial transaction? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do we need to relate it to business only? A- anything which is related to commerce. Huh? Could be any transaction, include. Yeah, anything which relates to trade and commerce. That's all. I buy a. Okay, sir. Okay. I buy a product from you. You sell that product. It's a business transaction. 
ओके सर हेलो सर हेलो यस यस मुझे एक क्वेश्चन था अगर जैसे कि एक छोटे साहूकार टाइप का होता है ना मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग लॉन्ड्रिंग का जिसका रजिस्टर्ड नहीं होता है जिन्होंने इंटरेस्ट पे पैसे देते तो कमर्शियल में आएंगे या नहीं आएंगे मतलब रजिस्टर्ड होना चाहिए तभी आएंगे ठीक नहीं कोई जरूरी नहीं रजिस्टर्ड होना चाहिए छोटे साहूकार भी कमर्शियल ट्रांजैक्शन कर सकते हैं बट अभी सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने एक जजमेंट दिया कि भाई वो साहूकार को भी अपना दिखाना पड़ेगा उसने इतनी फाइनेंस थी कि वो लोन दिया सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने अभी बोला है की जो आदमी ये बोलेगा मैंने संजीव साहब ने आपको दस करोड़ रूपए दिया है तो उसको इतना फाइनेंस शो करना होगा कोर्ट क्योंकि दस करोड़ है मतलब वो अपना इनकम दिखा के प्रूफ कर सकता है ना करेक्ट ये मतलब उसको ये प्रूफ करना पड़ेगा कि उन्होंने साइन किया अग्रीमेंट वगैरह ऐसा कुछ प्रॉपर डॉक्यूमेंट वो तो आप प्रूफ करोगे पहले तभी तो आप प्री समिंग ले जा रहे हो ना जहां पर आप एग्रीमेंट लगा रहे हो अगर आपके पास अंडरटेकिंग है उनकी चेक है आप सब चीज लगाओ तो आप प्रूफ करो ओके ये सब ओरिजिनल डॉक्यूमेंट है इसमें एक मेल तरह से सिग्नेचर एक उसके तरह से ओके सर बहुत ऑफ द लास्ट टाइम ओके थैंक यू सर हेलो सर सर गुड इवनिंग हेलो यस सर गो अहेड सर जैसे जिसके नाम से चेक बाउंस किया सर बाय चांस वो डेट कर गया हो तो उस केस में क्या होगा सर ओके लीगल एयर Please do not do of the CRPC. Legal ear can file the case. Okay, sir. Man, lo, jo usne case dal diya, uske baad bhi agar death ho gayi, tab bhi legal ear can file the case. So, sir, uske family wale se fir recover ki jayegi ya sir? No, complainant ki death hui, accused ki. Ah, uh, sir, jaise jiske naam ka check, um, jaise. हमने किसी को चेक दिया सर और हमारा चेक बाउंस कर गया तो जिस जिसने चेक दिया उसका अगर डेथ हो गया सर नहीं अगर आप बोल रहे हो कि एक्यूज का डेथ हुआ तो सिचुएशन डिफरेंट अगर आप बोल रहे हो कंप्लेनेंट का डिफरेंट डेथ हो तो बात अलग है हां ठीक है कंप्लेनेंट का She was asking about the uh, death of the. Sir, I knew. Thank you. Okay, so what happened? Okay, so. 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 Okay, गुड इवनिंग सर सर मनीष सर इफ अ केस इज डिसमिस्ड ऑन द ग्राउंड ऑफ प्री मेच्योर कैन इट बी रीफाइल प्री मेच्योर ऑन दैट इट डजंट फाइल अर्ली या या यस सर इट कैन बी रीफाइल इट कैन बी रीफाइल रीफाइल कैन यू जजमेंट इफ आई एम नॉट मिस्टेकन योगेशस जजमेंट हां प्लीज Logistics uh, judgment Supreme Court has clarified that you can file within one month of the dismissal and ask okay. for compensation, which now section nine hundred and forty-two provides. Right, right, right. Section five, right, right, right. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, 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 और उसने उसको वादा किया है कि वो छह महीने तक हर महीने दस परसेंट देगा उसका इंटरेस्ट और छह महीने बाद का उसने उसको चेक इशू करके दिया है एक लाख रुपए का कि एक लाख रुपए तुम्हारे वापस भी तुम्हें दे दूंगा और ये छह महीने जो है वो तुम्हें दस दस परसेंट करके तुम्हें इंटरेस्ट देते रहेंगे लेकिन अगर वो फर्स्ट मंथ ही अगर अपकाउंट हो गया अगर उसने इंटरेस्ट पे नहीं किया तो वन थर्टी होगा सर क्योंकि चेक तो छह महीने बाद का एक लाख रुपए का Can you repeat it? 
सर ए ने बी से लोन लिया एक लाख रुपए का और उसने उसको छह महीने बाद का एक लाख रुपए का चेक भी इशू करके दे दिया बी को और उसने वादा किया था कि उसको हर महीने दस परसेंट अपना उसको इंटरेस्ट भी पे करेगा लेकिन वो फर्स्ट महीने फर्स्ट महीने ही फेल हो गया इंटरेस्ट पे करने में तो सर तो छह छह महीने बाद का है लेकिन जो कम्प्लेनेंट है उसको तो अभी पता चल गया कि उसके साथ फ्रॉड हुआ है इसमें अभी उसके पास ये जो छह महीने है उसमें वो फोर ट्वेंटी या फोर जीरो सिक्स के साथ आगे बढ़ सकता है All right, sir. Got it, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Or can you have any question? Hey, what? Sir, in case if a complaint is made, death will happen. So, in this case, what will happen? If an accused is found, a complaint is made, death will happen. मैंने आपको बताया था, complaint is made, death will happen. So, their legal heir will come. Session P zero two of CRP. They can ask for impeachment, and they can pursue the case. Okay. I think Rasha has exhausted all the questions. हाँ, लग रहा है ये. It's nice कि तुम्हारा lecture इतना बढ़िया था कि concept clear होता गया तो questions का संख्या कम रहा. रवि रवि बना जी. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. दो दो क्वेश्चन हैं सर मैं आस्क हाँ हाँ आप पूछे यू कैन आस्क बोथ क्वेश्चन हाँ सर सर डस कंप्लेनेंट हैज टू प्रूव हिज फाइनेंशियल कैपेसिटी और स्टेटस इन एवरी केसेस नॉट इन एवरी केस बट ही हैज टू प्रूव हिज फाइनेंशियल कैपेसिटी दिस इज़ द जजमेंट व्हिच हैज कम रिसेंटली ऑफ़ सुप्रीम कोर्ट एंड वाज दैट � People were coming up with the check amounts okay. which was disproportionate to the uh, earning, more disclosed source of earning of that person. Uh, can we have the we citation have the... of that judgment, sir? Uh, I will share with the link. Oh God, but we have recently dealt with it. I'll share the link. I'll share the link in the chat box. Okay. Uh, my name. Okay. Okay, okay sir. Okay, sir. And uh, next question is: What if the track report of the postal receipt is not attached uh, with the case record, and then what are the defences available to the complainant pro to prove that the uh, notice has been served to the accused? Then you, if you track are, report is not available. If track report is not available, then you have to summon the post office. There is no other way. Uh, summon the post. Post a yes. postman with the record. Uh, okay. क्योंकि सर सिक्सटी डेज के बाद वो अवेलेबल नहीं होता ऑनलाइन. Track report. नहीं अगर नहीं होता है तो फिर आप post post office से लाओ उनको. उनके पास तो record होती है ना वो तो register maintain करते हैं ना वो record आपके पास देख के आएंगे register देख के आएंगे. वो prove करेंगे कि yes we have delivered. Sir, it should be registered post, na? No? Can we take the defence of Section 27 of the General Clauses Act? You know, General Clauses Act defence comes in where it has become an impossibility of an act. Okay. There is no other way to prove. General General Clauses Act Section 27 cannot be deployed anywhere and everywhere. Like someone asked okay. that if the person has locked his house, accused has locked his house and run away, then I said presumption is that he has been served. I said you have sent it to the last known address of the accused. Presumption is that he is sir. But not in your case. That you have failed to perform your duty as a complainant. That you have not taken the print of the the uh, what do you call the print of the delivery that note report. That report within 60 days. And then you don't want to summon the postman also. Now you are saying presumption. That's not permissible. Sir, RTI can also be asked. Sir, post office. If they have posted it. 
आरटीआई करके भी तो मांग सकते हैं ना पोस्ट ऑफिस अगर उन्होंने पोस्ट किया है तो आरटीआई तो 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 में लगाना रवि को रवि को कोई विकल्प चाहिए भाई <laughs> रवि <laughs> रवि <laughs> को कोई विकल्प चाहिए वो फंस चुका है ऑल्टरनेटिव के भाई आया है सर तो तो केस क्या है इसलिए वो थोड़ा क्यूरियोसिटी थी केस क्या है ये हां रवि बहुत रवि बहुत एक्टिव है इन फैक्ट कोडरमा का एक एक्टिव लॉयर है सो देयर फॉर इज लाइक ऑलवेज लुकिंग फॉर ऑल्टरनेटिव्स क्या हम तुमको बता आई कैन ट्राई आई एम राजेश विल ट्राई टू हेल्प क्या केस क्या है मारायन मनीष इज आल्सो देयर थ्री गुड लॉयर्स आर देयर मैं टू गुड लॉयर्स एंड मी टू गुड लॉयर्स आर इन एक्चुअली टू टू थाउजेंड नाइन राजेंद्र में केस फाइल हुआ था हाँ अरबी रवि रवि 2019 में केस फाइल 2019 में केस फाइल हुआ था एनआई एक्ट एंड फिर उसके बाद वो कोर्ट समन हो गया कोर्ट से एक्यूज को इन बिटवीन ट्रैक रिपोर्ट नहीं निकल पाया और फिर उसके बाद लॉकडाउन लग गया और 60 डेज ही अवेलेबल रहता ऑनलाइन ट्रैक रिपोर्ट ट्रैक रिपोर्ट सबमिट करने के लिए कोर्ट बोल रही है फर्दर स्टेज में तो ऐसे सिचुएशन में ट्रैक रिपोर्ट तो अवेलेबल है नहीं तो उसका अल्टरनेटिव क्या है वो जानना है सर जनरली सर जनरली व्हाट वी डू वी सेंड पोस्ट ऑफिस पोस्ट ऑफिस रिक्वेस्ट अबाउट द इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट द दैट रजिस्टर्ड पोस्ट and they send us a back a letter with the certificate that this has been delivered to such and such person with the stamp and signature of the postmaster and that that right. is uh, submitted to the court and it is duly acceptable accepted by the court that it is has been duly served on this particular date perfect so and in fact post office if you go they also they can uh, they can actually check that the report delivery report even after 60 days very nice post office can access it you cannot but post office can सर सर मेरा एक प्रश्न है हेलो हेलो हम राम विनय सिंह बोल रहे हैं सर एक मेरा प्रश्न है कि एक केस मैंने फाइल किया था एनआई एक्ट का उसमें सर्विस रिपोर्ट नहीं लगाया बट वो केस डिस्पोज हो गया और उसमें कन्विक्शन हो गया है अक्यूज को तो वो अपील में गया है तो क्या अपील में उस पॉइंट पर हमको कोई नुकसान हो सकता है क्या एक्चुअली नुकसान तो हो सकता है तो बट देयर विल बी वन जजमेंट ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट व्हिच कम टू योर फेवर वो जजमेंट को निकालो व्हिच सेज दैट इवन इफ द सर्विस अब तुमने उस पे क्या लगाया है लीगल नोटिस लगाया है दैट्स वन जी उसका जो भेजा था स्पीड पोस्ट या रिसीव वो लगाया है जी दो चीज तो आपने लगाया है एड्रेस जो है उसका वो करेक्ट एड्रेस है सेम एड्रेस है जो कंप्लेंट में दिया आपने जी जी ठीक है वो आपने स्टेटमेंट भी दिया होगा ये मेरे पास बाउंस बैक ओके नहीं आया है जी लेकिन उसमें उसमें एक कंडीशन आया था उसमें एक कंडीशन था सर की एक केक जब बाउंस हुआ तो उसको नोटिस भेजा तो उसने फिर टाइम एक्सटेंड करते हुए दूसरा चेक दिया उस चेक को हमने नहीं लगाया केस में उस चेक का वर्णन नहीं हुआ उस चेक को हमने कोर्ट को दिखलाया था लेकिन वो एग्जिबिट नहीं हुआ दूसरा चेक जो दिया इसलिए उसको वो एडमिटेड है कि उसको नोटिस मिला उसको इंफॉर्मेशन है नहीं तो फिर उसके बाद कोई कोई जरूरत ही नहीं है यू डोंट हैव टू प्रूव दैट इफ ही एडमिट्स द नोटिस देन यू डोंट हैव टू प्रूव जी जी सर देखो सेक्शन 57 ऑफ द एविडेंस एक्ट कहता है व्हाट इज एडमिटेड इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड टू बी प्रूव्ड 
राइट सर एडमिशन इज बेस्ट एडमिशन आपकी हो गई वो एडमिट एक्सक्यूज ने एडमिट कर दिया व्हाट यू हैव टू प्रूफ फॉर यस सर सेक्शन 57 ऑफ द एविडेंस एक्ट विल कम इन योर फेवर यस सेकंड चेक जो हम भेजे उसका वो प्ली ले रहे थे अपोजिट लॉयर कि यस इसका सर्विस नहीं हुआ बट हमारा प्ली था कि मैंने फर्स्टली इन्होंने चेक जो दिया वो बाउंस कर गया फिर इन्होंने टाइम एक्सटेंड करते हुए दूसरा चेक दिया और उसके बाद जो फर्दर है उसमें जजमेंट पास हुआ वो मेरे पक्ष में हुआ उसने उसको फाइन भी हुआ है तो वो अपील में गया है तो ये मैं जानना चाह रहा हूँ कि क्या उसका सर्विस रिपोर्ट अगर नहीं लगेगा तो क्या उसको नुकसान हो सकता नहीं होगा थैंक यू सर Good to see Rajiv Ranjan Prasad also there. Yes. I, yes. I, I suddenly see Rajiv Ranjan Prasad. I said this is a familiar face. <laughs> <laughs> you are muted, Rajiv. No, I'm not muted. No, Rajiv is muted. Now I can't call him Rajiv. Is problem. I I don't feel like I am his friend if I call him Rajiv. फ्यूचर ऑल्सो We have already right. conducted so many. But Kutsi Sanjeev, we have already conducted so many meetings. Ah, uh, just I mean, I just saw the message on the WhatsApp uh, posted by Rajesh Pandey that there was a meeting by Sanjeev Sahay. So I was very inquisitive about this thing. Yeah. Rajesh is working very hard, very hard. Rajesh is very really working. <laughs> i'm not working hard you people are working hard and and uh, sanjeev i was just interested in uh, uh, saying a thank for, to uh, our uh, technical help so mr abhishek uh, he is actually a lecturer in yogda system college okay and he provides the technical assistance to us oh and hey. uh, and he takes out time for all this and we should all thank thank him in fact because i uh, i am not very uh, savvy technically and he does all the hard work for giving that uh, those uh, technical assistance no no so thank, thank you from my side thank also you. from my side yeah, yeah. yeah. from all of us thank you that's very nice yeah so think i think we can close this now it this uh, i think the questions have all ended and i don't want a question from rajiv vijay prasad he will bold me and i'll have no answer he will find a different question from me and i'm not so sure not it's not like that so before he sends a bouncer i think we should close yeah, this yeah. student of law and we must admit it we are student of vvs uh, i mean it's a learning period vakil hamesha seekhta hai hum vakil hamesha seekhta hai bhai ye to hai see see uh, today uh, uh there's a lecturer uh, from christ university uh, in bangalore mm -hmm. will be holding a session on uh, constitutional an introduction to the constitution of india very it is a lawyer also yeah yeah so mm -hmm. uh, i'm informing all people that i'll be sending the link and mm -hmm. uh, any of you interested may join today at 7 pm very nice no you let her do that and i will yeah. do a session on constitutional amendments of the constitution wow exactly. so we'll start from you know fazal ali's judgment and we'll definitely come to minerva mill and after that definitely it has uh, but it stayed there but we'll see how the law has developed how yes. we got this basic feature and you'll be surprised pande to know that basic feature of the constitution from where we have got this yes yes, yes. from pakistan basic features Yes, ha, no, where, where, where there is no basic feature at all. No basic feature. <laughs> <laughs> so we can do that session sometime. Sure. Okay.
Yeah. Thank you so much, Sanjeev, for joining. Thank you, Mani, sir. Thank you, yeah, Rajiv. Thank you, sir. Thank you very and much. And thank yeah. you all, Ravi, and all, all of you, each one of you, for joining. In fact, such sessions uh, keep uh, our interest uh, and keep our, our knowledge updated. And uh, uh, make the entire thing, or the young people, they get also encouragement, and they also get a chance to interact with some senior advocates. Or the mid-level advocates, the people who are doing it. Thank you very much, Rajiv. Thank you, 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 Rajiv. एक्चुअली लुक You can do on Friday. Twenty second sounds better than twenty third the Saturday. कौन सा convenient रहेगा तुमको वो बता दो. Friday twenty second we can do. No no that is only one week. नहीं नहीं नहीं. No 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 that's two week. Twenty ninth. Twenty ninth. Okay. Perfect. Twenty ninth or thirtieth both are available for me. But you will have to let me know soon. Okay okay twenty ninth twenty ninth रख लो. हाँ ना. Twenty ninth. Okay. मनीष सर को भी हम लोग रिक्वेस्ट करेंगे एक कोई सेशन फटाफट जल्दी से I can see people from many many places. It's not only Rachi now. Yes, sir. Yes. No, no, it's not Rachi. It's Dhanbad. It's Dumka. It's Delhi. It's Altenganj. It's Kodarma. And yeah. it's very nice. It's trying to make it uh, more, uh, in fact, uh, popular. It will very become popular. Nice. Very very nice. Chalo. Okay. See you. Okay. Bye 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 all. Bye sir. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you